This is Fantasy Football Picks and Bets on Mayo Media Network, presented by Prize Pick. Get yourself a match deposit of up to $100 at prizepicks.com with code MMN. Obviously, hit the description. You can get the link right now to go to it. Also, down there, the waiver wire pickups, the time codes, and the giveaways. The Christmas bonus, $2,000 of two-week giveaways. We gave away the first $500 on the Sunday Night Live Pat Mayo Experience Show with Cust and Garion and Feinberg. So you can go check that show out, of course. It's a fun one. You probably don't want to miss it. We had Franz or Cust on. And we put up the graphic next to him. Looks just like Franz from Guess Who. Big Guess Who face on Tim Andercast. But if you hit the description right now, you can figure out all of the ways to get into the draw. Get as many ballots as possible. Additionally, every time you retweet one of the shows from Mayo Media Network, then you're going to get into the draw. We also have a TikTok channel now with best of clips uh, from over the years. I really enjoy it because I really have nothing to do with it. The team is putting that together. I see new ones pop up. I'm like, oh, yeah, that was hilarious. Let me go back and watch that. So anyway, uh, Mayo Media Net on TikTok. If you want to do that, you can get a ballot into the draw for the cash giveaway by subbing to Mayo Media Network right now. Smash the like and help us out while you're here as well. Let's get into Monday Night Football. We got the Pats at the Arizona Cardinals, uh, devastating prize picks on Sunday. Kendall Hinton, you know, the best play of the day. He comes in under. So what's the one that we put with it? Did I want to do my Mike White over 37 and a half passing attempts? I was like, nah, you know what? That's a lot. He exited the game twice and cleared the number. That wasn't a problem. I stupidly went with Daniel Jones. More than 28 and a half pass attempts. What happened? He got to 27. 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Down by a bunch. Easy over. Wrong. Tyrod Taylor in the game. Daniel, Daniel Jones gets the yank. Put him on the sidelines to keep him fresh for next week. I did not anticipate that happening. Uh, therefore, I lost again. So even when I have a good read on things, I'm not winning. So here's what I got cooking up. You know, might as well do a three play at this point. You know, not winning. So here we go. Nelson Aguilar with Jacoby Myers out for this game more than 29 and a half receiving yards kyler murray more than 36 and a half rushing yards the new england patriots have shown a propensity to not be able to limit any rushing quarterback we saw more designed runs from kyler the last time that we saw him on the field so that is very encouraging news just a healthy kyler and there's like two runs for you so let's go more than 36 and a half rushing yards than Ramondre with no damian harris more than 33 and a half receiving yards in this game i always like him more as a pass catcher than a runner $100 pays $500 to try to get ourselves somewhat, at least me, back on track on prizepicks.com. So that's what we're going with. Let's jump into the running back injuries and pickups and snap shares. Again, if you just join the newsletter, you can find the direct link to the different ways that you can get into that draw for the 2000 bucks. Uh, another 500 being given away this Friday, then 1000 the week after that to prep you for the holiday season. Running back injuries, Damian Harris, as mentioned, likely out for Monday Night Football. Kenny Walker and DJ Dallas did not play the Seahawks play on Thursday evening. So one of them might be back, both of them might be back, none of them might be back. We don't know at this point. I'm leaning towards they're probably not going to go. They might force Ken Walker to play because they need to have a decent performance against the San Francisco 49ers. They're actually like Seattle against the spread. I'm going to wait for it to balloon a bit. It opened it It opened at two, and then it went to three, now it's three and a half. It's going to be like five by the time kickoff happens. I like Seattle at home with San Francisco coming off, looking unstoppable in that game. Damian Pierce exited the game with an ankle injury, but he was smiling on the sidelines well the Texans were failing on fourth down near the goal line I think he's going to be okay we'll see about that though Mike Boone exited for the Broncos with an ankle injury Jeff Wilson left Sunday Night Football with a hip injury no word yet on him and Dontrell Hilliard had a neck injury he exited the game he was carted off the field I would not anticipate any Dontrell Hilliard in the future at least for the next few weeks we'll see how that goes pickups you can find the link down in the description just go to dknation.com to find everything all the hot links are in there as well i got tower algier jarek mckinnon chuba hubbard gary brightwell because who knows what's going on with saquon if they lose to washington this week it might be brightwell time in the giants backfield because saquon did not look 100 percent. still have gus edwards even with the return of jk dobbins Zamir White, Josh Kelly, Boston Scott, Alexander Madison, Jalen Warren, all the guys that would step into the 
quote unquote full time role in these offenses should anything happen to the starters in front of them. So that's the reason that I went this route. The only one I didn't include here, and I'll try to explain why, because I want to hear a little bit more about the injury concerns for the Seahawks. Like Travis Homer played the most snaps of anyone in football at running back at least on Sunday. Uh, it was kind of shocking to see that number. You don't normally see Travis Homa, uh, 91% of the offensive snaps. That is a fantastic number. So weirdly, like you kind of need to have him. Here's the issue though. He's playing the Niners and the Niners aren't going to give like, if you can't run on Carolina, how are you going to run? on the Niners. Maybe he picks up a bunch in the receiving game. He should be on that list, and I'm still trying to figure out where to put him. So I want to make that very available. And listen, if Ken Walker comes back, you want nothing to do with Travis Homer. But if he is the last man standing again, five snaps for Tony Jones, 48 for Travis Homer. We're going to roll with Travis Homer in this spot, but he's just not going to be a good play is the biggest issue when it comes down to him. It's like the old happy Gilmore. It's just one problem. They're not any good. So it might be fool's gold. Like he might be better off playing a second string Chuba Hubbard in his matchup rather than playing Travis Homer, even as the starter. Uh, I mean, it'd be hard to fully get behind that, but you got to see where I'm coming from on this, where I just don't think the Travis Homer is a good play. I thought he was a good play on Sunday. I played him on DraftKings. I didn't work out. Lost money on that one. You should probably be pretty used to that. Listen to me at this point, but it just, it does not seem like a great situation for Travis Homer here. Uh, the five top, for the week in terms of snap shares and everyone over 70%, Homer, Dalvin Cook, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, Travis Etchang with 75% of the snaps. And you had Sideshow, Raheem Mostert, only 36 snaps that accounted for 74% of the offensive work. Jeff Wilson had seven, but he left that game with an injury. So if Jeff Wilson is back, then obviously they go back into a split. If not, Mostert against the Bills is not a great situation on Saturday evening, but you know, it could be worse. Could be worse for you. It's better than Travis Homer if there's no Jeff Wilson, although you're probably not going to, you will know that. You'll know what's going on with Homer by Thursday, but you might not know what's going on with Jeff Wilson by Thursday, although that game is on the Saturday. I, I would even hold out hope and just wait for Raheem Mostert in that sense and try to go through with it. Let's go back up and go to wide receivers. Jacoby Myers is out for Monday Night Football. Hopefully he can return for the Patriots' sake against Vegas next week. Rondell Moore is likely out, and Debo Samuel is likely out for the regular season. He did not break his ankle, but has a high ankle sprain, four to six week recovery, which would put him back right around week one of the playoffs. So they, they can sit him down. They're running away with that division, especially if they win on Thursday evening. Tyreek Hill exited the game. He came back, and he exited the game at the end of Sunday Night Football. So we'll see what the report is on him. Hopefully he's okay for for your fantasy sakes. DJ Moore exited the game, although he played 96% of the snaps left at the end. I would think that she Smith gets some extra run if DJ Moore cannot go. T Higgins, thank, thanks a lot, Zach Taylor, telling us that you found out in warmups that he wasn't going to play. Just decided to tell no one about it. So hamstring injury did not play. Not sure what's going on with him for next week against the Bucks, but Tyler Boyd is doubtful for that game, expected to miss a week or two, could miss a week or two. That doesn't mean he's officially out, because I see when I sometimes I put could miss, doubtful. That doesn't mean out. Like, Jacoby Myers is out. He's been ruled out for Monday Night Football. Tyler Boyd hasn't been ruled out. He's just doubtful to play. I wouldn't expect, put it this way, when you're putting together your teams for Saturday and Sunday and Week 15, the first week of the fantasy football playoffs, don't count on having Tyler Boyd. That's all I'll say. Corey Davis, concussion. Elijah Moore stepped in a big way in terms of playing snaps and seeing targets 5 for 55 against the Bills. And I would like Elijah Moore actually a lot should Corey Davis continue to miss time. Not sure whether that's going to be the case or not, but it's something to keep on the radar. Kendall Hinton left with a hamstring injury. Cortland Sutton did not play, probably not going to play again this week. It was a two to three week injury. This would be week two. So we'll see how it goes with Cortland Sutton. Judy looked great uh, as we went through it uh, during the game. Got all of the touchdowns. Brennan Cooks and Nico Collins both did not play for the Texans. Traylon Burks' concussion was out for the Titans. And Kadarius Hunky Tony never plays. So, of course, he did not play for the Chiefs. Maybe he was closer during the week. So maybe he's a go in week 15. Wouldn't hold out hope on Kadarius Tony. However, uh, the biggest thing here when it comes to the pickups is what's going on with Nico Collins. If Nico Collins and Brendan Cooks both don't play, you know, then I'm going to have to bump up Chris Moore even more than where he is. If one of those guys comes back, he gets pushed down to wide receiver too, and obviously it's not as much. I, I 
I bumped down Nico Collins number 13. Now, if we get rumors that he's going to play, he would pop back up into like the top five in terms of probably the top three in terms of pickups for the week. I mentioned She Smith, Baker Mayfield, really love Barbara Stanwyck or Ben Skronik or whatever you're calling him these days. Jamison Williams just isn't playing enough. He's playing more and more each week, but unless he catches a 41-yard touchdown every week, he's kind of useless. Trenton Irwin, I actually bumped up. The Crocodile on a, he's number seven in the pickup power rankings this week. He is the one running uh, more so snaps and anyone else in the absence of both Higgins and Tyler Boyd. If Boyd is going to be out, we'll try to see whether it's Irwin uh, or Trent Taylor. I'm guessing it's going to be Irwin in that circumstance. Uh, Corey Davis is still on the list. Obviously, if he's going to be ruled out with a concussion, I'm going to bump him down and change it with Elijah Moore. That's a, a very easy trade for me. But Shark, Hollins, Darius Slayton, 1-2-3, Corey Davis, then Richie James, Chris Moore, Trenton Irwin, Demarcus Robinson, Jamison Williams and Traylon Burks, uh, just because we don't know about the injury status of Traylon Burks at the moment. Looking forward to tight ends, quarterbacks, and defenses for the week. We got tight end pickups. Ingram, obviously, number one. Okongwo, uh, with Traylon Burks continuing to be out, is continuing to see a bigger role. It's a big whiff by me this week. Sealy brought him up to me, kind of dismissed it. I wanted to go with my guy, Jordan Akins, who sucked. So egg on my face on that one. You know, I'm used to it at this point. You've been following along. So Okongwo is number two. Foster Moreau, Hunter Henry, Dawson Knox, Logan Thomas, Juwan Johnson. There's the potential for both Hunter Renfro and Derek. Darren Waller to return. Obviously, if Darren Waller returns, you just get rid of Foster Moreau. And if uh, Hunter, I mean, I guess you wouldn't even get rid of Mac Hollins if Hunter Renfro comes back. It may even be good for Mac Hollins at this point. Who knows? QB streams for the week. Heineke at home against the Giants. Matt Ryan against Minnesota. Minnesota just bleeds fantasy points to quarterbacks. I have a situation in my league this week. First round of the fantasy playoffs. I got Lamar, who's not going to play. I picked up Mike White. I played him this week. Uh, even though it was a terrible matchup, that's all that was left with six teams on by in a 14-team league off the waiver wire. Uh, I don't know if he's going to play is the problem. He's, he should play, but he might have broken ribs. Who knows? You got Brock Purdy Thursday night against Seattle. I, I, I'm really torn between Heineke and Matt Ryan this week. Like Those are my two options that I could potentially go with, and it's just so terrifying to play Matt Ryan because he sucks so much, but it's such a glorious matchup that you know, I'm an underdog in my matchup, so maybe I need to go swinging for the fences. Who knows? Injury-wise, Lamar did not play. He's probably out another week or two. Could be back on Christmas Day. Maybe they rush him back. I don't know, because Tower Huntley also exited that game with a concussion. They got uh, Michael Scott from Oregon playing. It's not really Michael Scott, but Scott's Tots playing quarterback for the Ravens right now. Kenny Pickett, concussion, exited the game. We got some more Mitch Trubisky in our life. That did not go well, unless you bet on the Ravens like I did, and then it turned out fantastic for you. But uh, Pickett, who knows if he's going to be back? Russell Wilson. There's. I don't want to say there's no chance that he's going to to play but just by looking at him on the field after sustaining that concussion unless his magic bubble concussion water comes through for him he ain't playing this week and we're getting ripping again uh mike white ribs taken to the hospital after the game he's been cleared right now we'll see how that goes tight end hayden hurst did not play we got wilcox filling in for him for the Bengals. didn't really do much uh, but i already talked about the tight end pickups for the week and then defenses to stream i initially had cleveland as my top defense to go pick up but just i guess you know we might be a third string quarterback but Baltimore's just going to run the ball 500 times, and that's not great for a fantasy defense. And I would feel better if Cleveland was going to be able to jump out 17-0 in this game or something crazy like that. But Sean Watson's looked like ass, so why are we even thinking about that at this point? So I had to bump them down just because I don't see the potential. It doesn't mean they can't do it, obviously. But if a team is going to try to run on you 75% of the times, that just doesn't lead to a ton of fantasy value for the opposing defense. Now, Pittsburgh, they're at Carolina, where Sam Darnold might throw them picks. That's much easier because their run defense, although it didn't look good against Baltimore, should look a little bit better against Carolina. Washington at home against the Giants. New Orleans at home against a first start. Desmond Ritter. We'll see how that goes. But I mean, I'm hoping I have an Atlanta to make the playoff bet at nine to one. So I really hope Ritter's good, but uh, chances are he's not. And New Orleans defense is actually pretty good coming off a of bye week. Uh, so they're both coming off by, but getting that defense healthy is key for New Orleans, who somehow are not officially dead yet. They're dead if they win, if they lose this game. So I would imagine the pressure rate is going to be up from the Saints this week. Carolina uh, at home against Pittsburgh, especially if Trubisky starts. Cleveland at home against Baltimore. Then you have Green Bay, Atlanta, Denver, and Arizona. I might bump up Arizona, although I don't know if it would be better or worse uh, if we 
had Russell Wilson or not, but we'll see how they do Monday night against the Patriots. Then I might rejig it for the week 15 ranking show with Jake Seeley. So that's going to do it for me on Fantasy Football Picks and Bets. Once again, code MMN at prizepicks.com to get yourself that match deposit of up to 100 bucks. You might just want to take the opposite of my picks at this point. And cash in bigly on it. And just for reference, guy Cuss has the chance to go a perfect 4-0 on the other side of his money line parlay. He played a 4 Team money line parlay this week as his free money parlay of the week. Uh, the first three lost outright against the money line, and he has New England tonight. So Arizona money line doesn't sound bad to me, right? Anyway, so get in the draw, sub to the channel, smash the like, and you can follow along in the description with the newsletter that gets updated for injury news and the waiver wire com will which which will get updated as we go along as well once more information is present for us so good luck on monday night good luck on the waiver wire good luck in the fantasy playoffs i'm pat mayo i'll see you next time